Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a British comic science fiction film called FAQ about time travel. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. At the start of the movie, we are introduced to three friends, Ray, Pete, and Toby, who are enjoying some drinks in a pub. They talk about some interesting topics like movies and time travel, while also having some good debates. After a while, Pete decides to head to the toilet. He has a very intricate way of peeing, which involves a bit of singing and dancing. After he's done, he heads outside, but as soon as he opens the door, he finds everyone dead on the floor, with devastation lying all around. Suddenly, he also notices a beardier version of himself, which is his future self, and rushes back into the toilet. After a bit of contemplating, he returns to the bar again, but this time, it has reverted back to its normal self. Following this, we are taken six hours before the incident. Somewhere in space, astronaut Ray talks about time travel from one of the spaceships floating around. He seems to be briefing a large audience on how one can combat against the aliens and destroy their existence. Slowly, he gets overexcited about the mission and starts spewing profanity. When the camera pans to his audience, it turns out that they are just a bunch of kids who are there for a science program. In fact, the whole setup is inside a kid's park. As soon as Ray finishes his overly energetic speech, the kids start crying. He tries to calm them down by turning on the alert button, but it only makes the situation worse. Just then, the manager of the park enters the room and witnesses the commotion. Enraged, he calls Ray inside his office and strips him of his duties. Ray even has his handshake snubbed by his manager, and in a fit of rage, he kicks one of the toys in his room. However, when the manager stares at him, he quickly picks it up as if nothing happened. Here, we get to know that Ray is a nerd who loves everything about time travel and sci-fi. Outside, Pete and Toby are dressed in dinosaur suits, distributing food pamphlets. The two have been struggling to get a decent job and now have ended up at the same kids park. Toby, who is another nerd, stresses that they're doing the job wrong, but a no-nonsense and carefree Pete assures him that it's right. While the duo is arguing, they are approached by a distraught Ray. In the next scene, the group sits at a restaurant and discusses possible job opportunities for Ray. Pete asks Ray about his dream job, if there were no limits, and the latter immediately replies that he wants to become a Time Lord. Hearing this, Pete starts teasing Ray, saying that he will never find a girl this way. However, Ray retorts that there are several sci-fi loving girls out there who will definitely find him attractive. Later, the guys go to a movie, but they hate it. Toby mentions that he can do much better than the Hollywood writers, and the other two challenge him to come up with his own story. Toby accepts and takes out his diary, in which he writes all of his ideas. He then recites his story, but sadly, Ray and Pete find it hilarious. Following this, the group heads to the local pub to have some beers. There, the group discusses some ideas on how they can make movies better, and Toby writes it all down in his diary. After they are done, Toby tears the page with all the notes and places it on the table. Meanwhile, Pete taunts his friends for being nerds and reveals that he doesn't believe in anything supernatural. As the group is discussing, their drinks run out and Ray is sent to fetch more from the counter. Ray gathers the drinks from the counter and as he is about to leave, a beautiful girl named Cassie calls him by his name. Ray, who is confused, especially because she didn't call him Time Lord, inquires on how she knows about him, and Cassie replies that she is a time-traveling agent and visits different time zones to repair time leaks. Leaks are the glitches in time through which normal people can venture into other time durations. Without taking her words seriously, Ray sarcastically asks Cassie to kill Hitler, but the latter replies that it would be against the rules of time because Hitler is bussin'. She also mentions that killing someone from the past is known as editing in their terms, and doing so will create a chain reaction that may cause grave consequences. However, there are a group of editors that kill famous people right after their most famous work. Ray is confused by the phenomenon, but Cassie gives some examples. In the context of Da Vinci, it would be killing him right after the Mona Lisa, and for Kurt Cobain, it would be killing him right after Nevermind. Cassie mentions that her job is to repair time leaks so that time can flow as usual. She further exclaims that her job is fairly boring, but one of the perks is getting to meet famous people from history, like Ray. Turns out that Ray is famous in the future because of something he hasn't done yet. She claims that in the future, several books will be written about him and refers to him as Ray the Great, indicating that she is not only a fan but has a bit of a crush on him. 
Ray is fascinated by the information as he has never had a girl to talk sci-fi with. They talk for a bit more and eventually head their own ways. Ray assumes that his friends set him up with Cassie to make him feel better after losing his job. However, when he confronts them about it, they deny arranging anything. Hence, he narrates the whole story to them, but Pete and Toby are having none of it. After having a few laughs, Pete decides to go to the toilet. Again, he has a very intricate way of peeing. After he's done, he heads outside, but as soon as he opens the door, he finds everyone dead on the floor, and among them is his future self. Seeing this, he rushes back into the toilet. After a bit of contemplation, he returns to the bar again, but this time it has reverted back to its normal self. He starts explaining everything to his friends, but the guys are skeptical of the story. Pete suspects that it is the same leak that Cassie was talking about. Eventually, after a lot of convincing, Pete gets the duo to head to the toilet and check for themselves. However, Pete himself is also forced to enter, despite not wanting to. Inside, Ray checks the stalls for any pranks, but doesn't find anything. Pete then mentions that if they want to travel through time, they will have to replicate his peeing routine. The trio then sings and dances together in the most awkward way possible. To make matters worse, an old man catches them in the act, but Toby mentions that it's a science project. After they are done, they head outside, but find everything normal, much to Pete's dismay. They then decide to head towards their table, but are shocked to find their past selves from 30 minutes ago there. Scared, the trio immediately retreats to another room and starts brainstorming ideas on how to avoid the situation. Ray mentions that they cannot confront their past selves, as it will create a paradox, whereas Pete mentions that they cannot go back inside the toilet as that leads to uncertainty. Hence, Ray comes up with an idea, and they decide decide to head inside a cupboard until their past selves head towards the toilet. Inside, Ray suddenly remembers that since they are in the past, Cassie is still present in the pub. After Cassie finishes talking with the past Ray, the original Ray approaches her and asks for help. He then reveals to her that the leak is the toilet itself, but Cassie doesn't believe it. She instead walks out the door, despite Ray's numerous attempts to convince her. But as soon as she goes out, she comes back inside with a totally different appearance. Turns out that Cassie has been gone for six months, despite being away from Ray for only one second. Cassie informs Ray that she has sorted everything out and suggests he wait with his friends inside the cupboard until their past selves leave. Meanwhile, it seems as if both of them have started liking each other. In the next scene, the trio come out of the cupboard after their past selves enter the toilet. Not willing to take any risks this time, they head to the ladies' toilet to freshen up. But when they come out, they are shocked to see the pub in a post-apocalyptic state. Seeing this, Pete decides to flee back into the women's toilet again. But when Ray and Toby are about to follow him, Pete suddenly emerges from the men's bathroom in a filthy state and stops them from entering. He seems to have traveled and stayed in another time zone for so long that he has been severely traumatized. Confused, Ray and Toby ask him about where he was, but Pete is too scared to answer. Instead, he keeps mentioning that they need to be ready with food and weapons. As Toby and Ray wander around to scavenge some supplies, we are shown an aerial view of the dilapidated city, which appears to be destroyed by some kind of nuclear strike. Soon, the trio gather some weapons and get changed into new outfits. After a while, when they head outside again, they are taken aback to find a large painting of themselves on the wall. Turns out that all three of them are extremely popular in the future. What's even more surprising is the fact that they are wearing the exact same outfits as in the painting. As the three are thinking about how they might have become popular, they suddenly hear a strange sound. They immediately rush inside, and right after, a huge ant devours a homeless man wandering outside. Inside the toilet, while Pete is explaining some of his scary experiences from the future, their past selves suddenly enter the toilet. Pete tries to contact them, but his friends pull him away inside one of the stalls. From there, they can just watch as their past selves make the same mistakes that they did earlier. When the past Ray comes to check on the final stall, he is distracted by the past Pete. Hence, he doesn't notice his future selves. When the past selves leave, the trio comes out of the stall, but Pete is enraged that he wasn't allowed to warn his past self. Hence, he rushes out of the toilet despite his friend's disapproval. When Ray and Toby also venture out to find their friend, they are taken aback to see several people dressed like them having a party. 
turns out that the party is a fan-themed night based on the trio. Toby is immediately flattered by the attention, but Ray suggests he play it cool. Soon, they find Pete and also come across another painting of themselves. There, they notice the piece of paper that they had used to write their ideas on earlier and suspect it as the reason for their fame. But since they were drunk when they were writing, they cannot remember its contents. The trio tries hard to remember the contents, but just then, they are approached by another time traveler named Millie. Millie claims that she is Cassie's superior and assures the group that she's there to take them back to their own time. The trio become delighted and follow her instructions. In the next scene, the group reaches the pub once again, and it now looks to be normal. Their past selves are sitting in their spot, so they decide to have a couple of beers and wait patiently. After the past selves leave, the trio quickly reach their spot and start reading the piece of paper. While the exact contents are not mentioned, the trio seems to be stunned by it. They then decide to leave the paper on the table so that they can get rich and famous in the future. Thinking that everything is now back to normal, Ray decides to take a leak, but this time, he heads outside. As he is about to do his business, he is again approached by Cassie, who seems very happy to see him. The two bond for a while, but when Ray mentions that he traveled into the future, Cassie doesn't believe him. Ray then explains about the specifics of his time travel, which includes him meeting Millie. Shocked, Cassie reveals that Millie is an editor whose main job is to kill people right after they do something famous. In this context, she wants to kill Ray and his friends, as they just laid the foundation for their popularity on a piece of paper. Hearing this, Ray heads inside to warn his friends, despite Cassie telling him that it's not safe. Inside, Ray explains the situation to his friends, and they get ready to escape. However, it soon dawns on them that Millie is a time traveler, so escaping won't be of any help. Just when the group seems to be doomed, Ray comes up with an idea. He mentions that if they burn the piece of paper, they won't be famous in the future, and hence, Millie won't be after them. Pete also approves of the idea, but Toby is hesitant, as he thinks that it's their only chance of becoming rich. Despite this, Ray tries to burn the paper, but unluckily, the lighter doesn't work. He then heads to the counter to get another lighter, but Toby gets increasingly aggressive and starts fighting with Pete. While the two are at it, they are approached by Millie. Ray and Cassie try their best to stop her, but they are easily overpowered. She even injures Pete when he tries to burn the paper by himself. Just then, Toby comes to his senses and tries to destroy the paper, but Millie uses her superpowers to swat the paper away and eventually destroy the whole room. In the following scene, we are shown a bloody room with bodies lying all around. The paper has also landed on its original spot on the table. Just then, Ray starts moving, implying that he is not dead yet. Pete's past self also walks in at the same moment, and after witnessing the chaos, he runs back. Meanwhile, Ray musters up the last of his energy and tries to grab the paper. In the process, he spills beer on it, causing the contents to evaporate. With the paper destroyed, the boys never become famous, and as a result, the editors were never after them. Because of this, everything that took place is reverted to its original form, and the boys are taken to the same spot they were in some hours ago. Finally, everything seems to be normal again. In the final scene, as the trio reaches near the train tracks, they are again approached by Cassie. She makes out with Ray, and here it is revealed that they have been dating for the last two years. However, there has been a slight problem in the timeline, and Cassie needs the boys' help to sort it out. The movie ends as Cassie opens a portal to the future, and the boys jump right in. I wonder what was on that paper. Probably the idea for OnlyFans. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.